All right, so the hunters uh, would have liked to see the reactors with the uh, LGR does want to know the Iron Blood game details. So let's keep a try to hunters react this. Hey, Dan Okay, whatever, Josh. Why had I never heard of this until recently? This is Iron Blood, published in 1996 by Microforum and developed by Family Production Incorporated. Hmm, maybe, maybe that's why I hadn't I heard of it. As far as company names go, go it's hard to think of one more drab than family production. But while it may sound like a group of stay-at-home moms, FamPro was a fascinating game developer. They were based in South Korea for one thing, were quite prolific in DOS PC game creation, and during the 90s a few of their properties actually made it overseas. Through a deal with the Canada-based Microforum, three of Family Pro's games got English localizations. Shaki the Wolf, Rebel Runner, and Iron Blood. I'd heard murmurs of those first two, yet I'd never once heard of Iron Blood until I ran across this box copy from Expert Software. As soon as I saw the box art and took a look at the screenshots on the back, I was psyched. It See? See right there, right here. It's like, there's a back corners here to the stream shot. It's to show the game itself, the graphics, it seems like a Japanese anime mecha styles. But the South Korean developer, the graphic lead, they made out the anime mechas. It's just, it's just, it's just resembling like Gundams and Robotex. And I was a play in this a first time here to the fast pace that the action arcade does looks like this. But it sounds interesting for me. It just screams mid-90s arcade goodness. This expert version of the game simply comes with a CD and a jewel case, relying on a readme file instead of a proper manual, so that sucks, but at least it's got a nice shiny box. Therum Plasma starts up with this manga-looking chick alongside a few setup options, and in a somewhat unusual move, there's only support for Sound Blaster sound. It's either that or nothing, so suck it, MediaVision fanboys. After some logo animations, Iron Blood unironically fades in its name on top of the main menu. Uh, this is the North American version, of course, but the original from Korea was titled Interrupt, and I have no idea what the name change was for. Seems kind of silly. Anyway, from the menu, it looks an awful lot like a classic 16-bit console game, right down to the music and sound tests in the options menu. Selecting Game Start will provide you with two beefy robots, the RG-104 Cyber Troll and the SG-43 Ripple. These mecha have their own pilots, and there's a pretty involved backstory. That, that robot design looks pretty cool. So apparently, there's a blue one to resemble it from Halo, but the red one here is pretty rough and pretty neat. Yeah, but all you need to know is that the red one is slow and stronger, while the blue one is fast and weaker. The game itself plays in drastically different ways depending on your robotic preferences, but either way, you'll be battling through six levels divided up into several stages each. Initially, these levels play like a side-scrolling action arcade game, and a particularly weak one at that. Your weapons feel under. This, this is what it looks look like a Super, Super Nintendo and PlayStation. PlayStation. It's it's this game style looks look like a Mega Man and the robot is the mecha style to, from, from Super, Super Nintendo. Nintendo. This, this, this is definitely, definitely the different look like. Howard and the enemy's attacks seem really cheap. Yeah. But let me tell you, Iron Blood is a game where first impressions mean basically nothing because the good stuff is drip fed to you slowly as you play. Your mecha is totally crap at first because you have to find power ups, and these will drop from certain enemies as you kill them. So while you can just breeze through a level dodging everything, you'll be severely underpowered if you do this by the. Wait, hold on a second. There's this that enemies encountered when I found this. Severely underpowered. It's right there. It's a robot gang that appears in the games. This is actually the robot gang that's holding the laser gun as a attempt to attack the two pilots. And who would ever to take over the city? According to this game details of Iron Blood on this story. 
hard if you do this by the time you get around to the next stage. Like any good arcade game, it's imperative that you memorize how each enemy moves and which enemies will drop power-ups and health packs. It's not always intuitive either, especially on these shoot 'em up stages. Oh yeah, sometimes the game will change styles completely, switching over to a spaceship shooter. It's a pretty tough one too, with the sprites being so large that it feels cumbersome at first. But once you figure out that many of the ships won't hurt you if you touch them, and doing this and killing them up close is key to collecting power-ups and health before they fall off the screen, it's pretty awesome. It's, it's also got this thing where you have separate keys for firing left and firing right, which I'm glad for because having a key to toggle directions is bothersome to me. The other big thing that gives Iron Blood its personality is that the two playable robots change the pacing of the game completely depending on which one you choose. The red one is all about bursts of power, doing damage from a distance, being equipped with a jetpack, guns, bombs, and a crazy powerful punch. But everything with this guy is slower and more methodical, from aiming your guns to using the jetpack. The blue bot is all about twitchy speed and melee attacks, making use of a double jump and a lightsaber of sorts to rapidly strike down foes up close. Not only are these differences just a matter of preference, but each mecha is better suited to certain stages and boss battles. The red one is more well-rounded when it comes to fighting on the ground, but the blue one is more nimble at dodging attacks, especially in the shoot 'em up sections. Seeing as the game is about half and half between these two types of gameplay, it's really fun to play around and see which one works better for you overall. There are also some elements that help balance the two styles, like the power-up which temporarily gives you a powerful autonomous drone, and a few levels that differ depending on your robot. But for the most part, it's up to you to learn the two completely different strategies for each protagonist. And man, I think this is just awesome. It's one of those games where each time I play I get just a bit further than last time if I'm really paying attention, and I love when an arcade game rewards you for skill like that. It's not always fair with the hit detection, and sometimes it's downright infuriating to die in the same spot over and over, but it only fills me with resolve to do better next time. Iron Blood is a pretty excellent little action game in my book, and I'm sure if it was in an arcade when I was a kid, then I would have lost hundreds of quarters gladly to it. Come to think of it, the graphics and sound seem like something straight off of a CP System arcade board, and I love that. Yeah, that's one sexy FM soundtrack. Now, while the music is good, the main thing that I wish was improved are the sound effects, because half the stuff sounds really tinny, and the other half is just, uh, not there. Oh yeah, and the fact that you only have a few continues before getting a game over, that just annoys me in a home computer game where you can't insert more credits. Well, well, anyway, that's Iron Blood. Blood. It's, it's neat, neat, and I like it, and it makes me want to dive deeper into the world of Korean PC stuff. Maybe there are way better DOS games from Korea in this vein, but dude, this one impressed me, and it's still worth playing, so track it down and give it a shot if you ever have the chance. Well, that was a, that was a pretty polished and neat that I even saw. And the hunters got this, got this as detailed with this iron blood. Yeah, <laughs> that looks really cool. Yeah, it's with features like a Japanese anime mecha style says robot says where you have to ride on the two pilots and the, each one of it has for a platform and flying sections that have to de defeat the robot gang and destroy their evil menace. Uh, from, from the story, story that's where it goes, goes. It's, it's only concerned uh, six stages of total of the gameplay. But it's purely, it's pretty fun. fun. That's unheard of it is a that unseen that South Korean the gaming that's where it exists. And I gotta pick up the Iron Blood the game files today. <laughs>